everyone. This is the second part of activity 1.14, blood evidence. This part is on blood typing, and this is part of the Principles of Biomedical Sciences curriculum at Project Lead the Way. So here's my setup. You can see that I have substituted this item that came in the most recent blood evidence kit with these wells behind me. Reason being, these are very small, as you can see here. So I wanted, for the sake of this video as well, I feel like it would be easier for you guys to see the clumping or non-clumping against these white backgrounds and these bigger wells. So the aliquots that I have prepared are also bigger than what PLTW specified. Instead of using 50 microliters, I'm actually going to be uh, micropipetting 100 microliters into each of these wells. So I have prepared more than enough for two rounds of micropipetting. And so here are the controls, the positive controls for type A, type B, type AB, and type O. These two here are the crime scene samples, which we should have determined from part one of this activity that they are very likely to be blood. Here is Anna Garcia and Eric Piedmont, Taylor Diaz, Dominique Hall, Sam Green, and Dr. Elsie Opal. Over here, I have these anti-A, anti-B serums. Um, I put them in here and then I realized I'm going to need a lot more than this to, you know, go through all of these. So I took out these, which I already had prior to, um, I guess, this summer. So these serums, this is anti-A, this is anti-B. Anti I'm just going to be dropping these into the wells instead of using a micropipette. So this is an Edvotech micropipette that I purchased separately because the ones that I have from last year, some of them are broken and we just didn't have enough. So this is one of the new ones that just came in. This is for 100 microliters. And how you can change the microliters is you can push this upward and then you are able to rotate this. And we're just going to put it back at 100 and then you pr press it down to uh, secure it so that you cannot twist this anymore. This over here is what you press down. Oh, let me get one of these first. So here is the micropipette tip. I'm just going to securely get that and then to draw any liquid, you are going to press down on this one over here, just once. So you'll notice you can press it down once and then a second time even further. You're only going to press this down once. And when you do that, you can't see it on here. So you're only going to press on this once. And then I am going to start... So here is the first um, one that we are going to draw from. You're going to press down. Let me you press down once. And then you are going to go in and release it. As you release, you'll notice the blood is drawn up into this tip and then you are just going to release it in there and if you were here in person you would do this as a group So remember not to cross-contaminate 
So after you are done using one of these, you need to dispose of it. And to dispose of it, you press on this blue part, you press down and the tip will come right off. So I just picked up a new one for blood type B. Again, I'm gonna press down. Well, actually before that, let me open this because this is kind of hard to open. All right, so this is blood type B. Press down and you are going to release. And then release. Let me see if I can do it this way. All right, so I know this is a weird angle, but the reason why I'm holding it like this is so you can see how I press down twice. Once here, and then the second time is this part. And that should push out any excess liquid from the tip. Of course, there's still some, can't help it. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Press down once. Okay, so I'm missing a few here, but that's fine. That's enough for the purpose of this activity. I'm just gonna release it there and close this. Again, I am going to dispose of this tip and get a new one. So this is what it looks like after all the blood types, all the blood samples have been aliquoted into each of these wells. Now I'm going to be adding first for the top row the anti-A serum. I'm just going to put a drop or two, actually maybe two to three drops in each of these wells just so there's an equal amount. And then I will go through and put the anti-B serum. And we will observe what happens to each of these. So this is just right after I have finished dropping the anti-A anti serum. I want to point out that blood type A and blood type AB the, those wells um, look quite different from the B and O well. If you notice, they are sort of lighter in color and more pinkish. Just an initial observation. Alright, so I have added the anti-B serum. And this is what the control blood types look like. So far, I don't know if you can see any differences between these. Here is the second batch. So the two crime scene samples plus Anna Garcia and Eric Piedmont, her boyfriend. And here we have the rest. So we're going to let these sit for 10 minutes and then we're going to come back and check in on them.
We are back. It has been 10 minutes. I'm showing you these at an angle because it is easier to see if agglutination or clumping has occurred in each of these wells. And you can see clearly uh, the A and the AB sample have a significant amount of clumping occurring. And you can see that reflected in the, the light. If I hover over it, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can see thin uh, like lines also on the bottom of the well whereas B and O do not have any clumping. Now let's take a look at the crime scene samples. It's a little bit more difficult to see. It's not as easy to see the clumping. However, you can see that there is substance built up within these wells. Here is Ana Garcia and her boyfriend, Eric Piedmont. Here are the crime scene samples. Anna Garcia and Eric Piedmont. Let me show you them at an angle. And last but not least, we have Taylor Dominique Sam Green and Dr. Elsie Opal So take notes on what you observe whether or not you see clumping for anti A now we're going to be looking at anti B. So you can see from the controls that they look very similar to each other. However, I'm going to bring a little toothpick in. What's that? You can hear it as well. I get another toothpick. Try this one. And I clearly forgot about the first one. So let's also go in there, give it a little. Okay, so what you should have noticed, or maybe what you should have heard, was that in both B and AB, you can see there is clumping. You could have also heard that when I stuck my toothpick into each of the wells, there was something solid and crunchy at the bottom. And that's what I pulled up on the sides. And so these are our positive controls. It makes sense that B and AB would clump and react with anti-B. Now we're going to move on to look at the crime scene samples. 
and Ana Garcia and her boyfriend. So I'm going to show it from this angle. Let's look at Taylor. Taylor Diaz. And Dominique Hall. And Sam Green. as well as Dr. Elsie Opal. So going back to the controls, remember these are positive controls. It makes sense that A only interacted with anti-A, B only interacted with anti-B, AB, you can see it clumped with both serums. O does not have any clumping in either serum. Using that information, you can then narrow down the individuals to those that have matching blood types to the ones found at the scene. So first determine the type of blood that was found at the scene, then determine each of these individuals, and you can narrow down whose blood it may have been at the scene.